my name is Martin Morgan and I'm a member of the Berean Christian Fellowship. It is a great privilege to be able to bring today's study, uh, which is taken from Colossians chapter 3. And if you'd like to read with me from Colossians chapter 3 and from verse 1. And it says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amen. The Apostle Paul continues this particular portion of scripture with an if. If then you were raised with Christ. Now I don't believe that Paul is questioning here whether or not believers are in Christ. I believe that he is using this sentence to provoke us to question our conduct and our mindset. A conduct and a mindset that should be in contrast with our former ways before we had initial faith in Christ. It causes us also to examine ourselves. There is that moment where we become arrested in our thought process to reassess and to take stock of our position. The Apostle Paul wants each of us to be certain in our own hearts and minds we must be convinced ourselves of the assurance that scripture affords us concerning our new position in Christ, but also the responsibility that it brings. Salvation must always be a personal testimony, but based on the same universal faith that all Christians share. Our own personal testimony can then be added to the collective testimony of the community of God's people, the church. You see, many attend church and add themselves physically to the company of God's people. But sadly, many are not added spiritually because they have not yet been born again. They haven't yet died with Christ and been raised with him spiritually. Friends, church attendance and religious acts of piety cannot and will not save us. Neither being in um, the church membership or membership register, that neither will grant us salvation. Our names must be added instead to the Lamb's Book of life, which can only come by receiving salvation through Jesus Christ and him alone. Some have told me, ah, but I've been a member of such and such a church all my life. But sadly, they have never repented of their sin. They've never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into their lives as their own personal saviour. They have not died and been raised with Christ. Romans chapter 6 verses 6 to 11 says, Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, whilst church attendance is necessary, for fellowship and spiritual growth, it is of no use to you until you come to Christ. Repent of your sins. 
In other words, turn away from your old life, your old ways, and ask God to forgive you and embrace the Lord Jesus Christ as your only Lord and Saviour. He will then, by the power of the Holy Spirit, regenerate your dead spirit and make you alive unto God. The Bible promises that we will be born again when we have done that. Once we are then able to confirm that this indeed is our testimony, we can then embrace the remainder of this portion of scripture. If, if, if you are risen, in other words, made alive with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your mind, in other words, your affections, on things above, not on things on earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. What then, church, does it mean to seek those things which are above? What does it mean? The Greek word used here for the word above refers to above as a comparative degree. In other words, we are to see and to understand the contrast that we are now given. The contrast between our old life and the contrast with our new life that we have now in Christ. When we look at our lives in comparison to what they were before we knew Jesus Christ, this should instill in us a deep sense of appreciation and gratitude, but also a stark reminder of what it is that we have fled from, what it is that we have been saved from. The Apostle Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is telling us to refocus our way of thinking to one that is far more elevated than it previously was. You know there are some Christians that I have met and all they seem to want to focus on is everything that is wrong with life, this world, themselves, other people and so on and so on. Whilst we are not a people that live lives in denial to what is wrong, we must also be a people that are able to elevate our focus onto the Lord Jesus Christ and be reminded of all that he has done for us and is doing for us and will do for us. I love that hymn, Count Your Blessings. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. We are called to refocus our goals, our aspirations, our affections, etc., etc., and centre them on the Lord Jesus Christ and where he is. Paul states that this is at the right hand side of God. Church Christ is not only at the right hand side of God where all power and authority resides, but the Bible says he is seated. He is seated at the right hand of God. Have you ever stopped to wonder what that actually means? Well, the priests of the Old Testament were unable to sit down during their ministry in the tabernacle and later the temple because the sacrifices that they offered could never appease the full requirements of a holy God. However, it tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 11 to 12. It says, And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, has sat down at the right hand of God. Another reason to focus 
or to fix our focus heavenward to where Christ is seated is to remind it that he, he has accomplished it all. He has paid the full price for our sins and has completed and accomplished the necessary work for our salvation. The full sacrifice that was required for our sins has been made by him. It is finished. The debt is paid. He has paid it upon the cross of Calvary. He took our place. He was our substitute. Friends, you may feel unsaved today because everything is on top of you. Nothing is going right. But my brother, my sister, set your minds on things above, not on things of the earth. Church, the world at this time has been shaken. It has been thrown from its comfort zone during the past couple of months. The global COVID-19 pandemic has forced everyone everywhere into a new way of life. A life where our social liberties have been removed and a life where we have had to rethink how we do things. Many have also lost loved ones and have been thrown into feelings of desperation and despair. As a church, our hearts and our prayers go out to those who have experienced this. For the most, we have just been inconvenienced and isolated from loved ones and friends. We've been confined to the same locations day in, day out, and let's face it, for some of us, a trip to the supermarket to buy essential items has suddenly become the highlight of our week in breaking up the monotony that we are faced with. This refocus has caused us to realise how fragile, how uncertain, how unpredictable and unsteadfast this life suddenly is. That the things of this life that this world can offer can be snatched from us at the drop of a hat. Church, if we are investing our lives, our energies, our affections and our focus purely on the things of this world, then we do so in vain. The Lord Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 6, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Friends, this ties in with our main reading, which tells us to set our minds upon things above not on things on the earth. The Greek word used here for mind is the word phroneo, which especially refers to our affections in connection to moral considerations. Church, what is it that we love the most? Where is our affections um, centred upon? Church, how we think will impact how we act and how we live for Christ. You know, neurological science tells us that from the moment that we are born, we are born with the full amount of neurons that we will ever need or we will ever have. But these need to be used and exercised in order for us to learn. By the time we reach three years of age, 80% of our brain's functional ability to learn is available in taking all of the information that we are exposed to in. However, also from the time that we are born, our neurons are also dying daily and will continue to do so until the day we die. From birth, our brains are focused on absorbing information at a very fast rate. That information which we are exposed to um, through sight, through touch, 
through hearing, smell, etc., programs us into being the persons that we grow up to be. However, we were created also to have an acute spiritual awareness, an understanding and a knowledge of God, which sadly has been lost due to the fall of Adam. We are spiritually dead to the things of God. But praise God, we receive a new birth through Jesus Christ. And that new birth starts with a new revelation, a new light and understanding that has dawned within our hearts through the Lord Jesus Christ. New information, new insight, new spiritual awareness. It tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The Holy Spirit takes the word of God that we have become exposed to and convicts us of our need of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we accept him and his gospel, we are spiritually quickened and made alive to God. That moment that we have that revelation of our need of the Lord Jesus Christ and we repent of our sin and accept him in as our personal Lord and Saviour. At that instant, we are spiritually made alive to God. Ephesians 1 verse 13 tells us, In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. From that moment on, our minds are able to receive the spiritual things of God and we are able to grow in the knowledge and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ as we familiarise ourselves more and more with his word. We go from being babes in Christ to becoming more and more mature in our understanding and in our knowledge. We begin to desire to be more and more like Christ the more and more we see him revealed in his word. Further down in our main reading, in verse 10, it tells us, And have put on the new man who was renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Read down verse 10, and with that in mind, with no pun intended there, let's look at Romans chapter 12. And in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it tells us, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All of the information that we have received and been trained by from our first birth has to be brought into submission to a new set of information, which we later receive from our second birth. A knowledge and understanding that elevates us spiritually to the place where Christ is seated. This is a daily process of renewing our minds by replacing much of what we have learned from our former conduct with a knowledge of Christ and his word, a word which is able to wash our minds with the pure water of the word of Jesus Christ. Our lives are now in Christ, our position is now in Christ. Our future is now in Christ. Verse 3 tells us um, from Colossians 3. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. The word used here for hidden is the Greek word krypto. And it refers to something being concealed hidden from any ability to change or tamper with its position. And from this we can know that our old life, which has been put to death, remains hidden with Christ in God. 
Sadly, the only people that dig that old life up is ourselves. But in Christ, it's hidden, it's buried. Also, our new spiritual resurrected life that we now have in Christ is also hidden and secure with Christ in God. And friends, our future, our eternity is also hidden and secure in Christ, in God. None, the Bible says, can snatch us away from the Father's hand. Church, whilst we are in Christ Jesus, our salvation is secure. It is hid in Christ, in God. Let that sink in deep into our hearts. This Greek word, krypto, can also be found in Colossians chapter 2, where it tells us that all the riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Not only is our life church hidden with Christ in God, but there in that sacred and privileged position, we also have um, an understanding that we have access to understanding, to wisdom and the knowledge of God. Church, it is all there in Christ. The Bible says, the Apostle Paul tells the Corinthian church that we have the mind of Christ. Basically, that means we have access to the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom of God through his word, the Holy Bible. And the Holy Spirit will give us understanding and enable us to understand the spiritual things of God, which from before um, knowing Christ, we were unable to understand, we were unable to grasp. But now through the Spirit of God and through the Word of God, we have access to these precious truths. Church, may this encourage us today. May we be encouraged to know that our lives are hid in Christ with God, that he has died, he was buried, and he has risen again, and now he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. But also, because we are in Christ, we also have shared in that death, that burial, and that resurrection. And the Apostle Paul also tells the church at Ephesus that we are now seated with Christ in heavenly places. Church, may we be encouraged today to delve deeper into the word of God, to increase our knowledge, increase the information that we can uh, grasp and take hold of concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. May we ever have a desire to grow in both the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is all there for the taking. Church, May we grow, may we desire to know the Lord Jesus Christ more and more. May we understand that this life which is hid in Christ, it tells us, is one day, is one day going to be displayed with him. Verse 4, when Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Church, this life, this world that we are experiencing right now, it may be in chaos, it may be turned upside down, it may be uncertain, but know this, that we have full assurance that we are secure in Christ. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.